Hey everybody, it's James here from the Sawyer Family Reviews channel, and today we're continuing our series of DC Collectibles Animated Reviews. We're keeping the train going with number four, Catwoman from Batman the Animated Series. Let's check it out. As always, we'll take a look at the package version first. Catwoman was the only figure in the first wave that was part of the Batman the Animated series. I think the second wave flip-flopped it, so there was three Batman Animated and one new Batman Adventures, if I remember right. I can't recall. Uh, so she was the only one to receive this kind of packaging, which has the red highlighting. We would find out later on, years later, there would be a third variation, which was Adventures Continue, which had yellow packaging. But for the most part, the line is split between blue and red. Blue for new Batman Adventures and red for Batman the Animated Series. So you got red highlighting down below, Batman the Animated Series logo, Catwoman's name, number 04, sculpted by Irene Matar, and the back is a flip-flop of the front of the card so that Batman is in red and the background is black. That's everything to it. Let's get her out of there. Okay, there's Catwoman out of the box. First of all, her height... She stands right at about five and a half inches tall, which makes sense since the line is built at the six inch scale to have her be a little bit shorter so she can stand next to Batman and Robin and everything and be the right height. Okay, let's talk about her stuff first. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and do the stand first because I don't like them. Uh, well, I'd like this part. These character turnarounds, super cool. I actually have the Batman animated style guides, so I need to go back and look and see if these are directly from the style guides or what. Uh, but I do like them. I think that's really neat looking. I wish there's a way I could figure out, I guess I could just have them standing on these, but because this doodaddy is too much. I'm not a fan of this. I'm not even going to put it together, but you get the deal. It comes with this thing and you put the prong on there and you threw the thing. I don't like them. They take up too much room. They're overly complicated for what they are. Okay. Next up we have Isis. Her cat. Isis is cool because Isis is articulated too. She's got tail movement where it swivels. She's got, oh, it's kind of stuck. Come on now. She's got a ball jointed head. And then she's got articulation at her four limbs where they all swivel. That's a lot going on. It's six points of articulation for an accessory and a paint app. So that's pretty cool. Isis is cool. Isis is a, um, a mainstay for Catwoman in the animated series. So... She's a must-have accessory. And then, of course, the other must-have accessory is her bull whip or cat of nine tails, whatever you want to call it. It's made of a flexible, rubbery material. It's soft, so it can move around really well. I didn't talk about the extra hands yet. We'll save the two character-specific accessories for after the hands. She's got, on the figure, she's got a couple of gripping hands. And then we've got a couple of even tighter gripping hands. So I would say these are for the bull whip. I don't know if those are focusing in or not. They kind of are. And all of these have kind of sharp claws on top of that, which is neat. And then she's got the open hands, which you can see even more that the fingers are pointed at the end, signifying her claws. There were some episodes where she had, and Mondo did this for their figure, where her claws were painted yellow. I would have liked to seen that. I would have liked to seen a set of hands with the yellow claws on them. Um... Because that was cool and Mondo included that. But, you know, it's it's not Mondo pricing. She's already got three full sets of hands. I can understand why they did it. Then she's got this necklace that was stolen at the beginning of the Cat and Claw episode, which are her, which is the episode where her specific episode-specific accessories come from. And then she's got her little camera that she used to gather evidence in that episode. It's got a paint app on the end of two yellow lenses. Um, so that's all her accessories. Her paint is really nice. The yellow on the belt's very clean. There's not a ton of paint going on, but there shouldn't be a ton of paint going on for the Batman animated line because they have sort of simplistic designs in order to make the animation easier. The only paint areas there are, I believe that her arm is painted between black and gray because I don't think it connects there. No, it does not. And then she's got obviously paint apps on the face. But other than that, it's pretty much molded in the colors it needs to be. Although I take that back, I think maybe they painted this gray as well, but there's nothing like intricate crazy lines or something like that. The, the face is painted really well too. I'm gonna get her closer so you can check that out. 
so the eyes are really nice, the lips are nice, and you can even get a little bit of teeth in there too. Uh, articulation wise, really well done. I love the fact that this is the, okay, so we should talk about that really quick too. This is the last one I have to talk about this. Look at that, no hip holes. So the first release of this figure had holes at the front of the hips and along the sides of the knees. And then they, moving forward into Wave 2, they got rid of that. But they went back and redid Batman and Catwoman so they wouldn't have those, those ugly holes on there. Which, for a character that's wearing a skin-tight outfit, it was more true of on those than Two-Face and Mr. Freeze. So I'm glad, if anything was going to get redone, it was those two. And Catwoman especially, because it really broke up her sculpt. Since she's a smaller character, getting rid of those peg holes really helped. All right, so articulation. She's got hinged ankles. They got a lot of movement on them. And then they pivot. And those are tiny, too, so it's cool that they got in the pivot and the hinge on that. She's got rotation where the boot meets the pant leg, or tights, whatever you want to say. She's got knee joints that are nice and tight. She's got rotation at the hips. They get up to there and back to there. You're not getting a ton of hip movement on these, but I'd rather have that than have a really ugly, like, ball joint or something, in there, or something like that in there. Then she's got hinges that go out to there. Um, no rotation or anything in the, the torso. Again, you don't want to break up that sculpt. She's got rotation in the shoulder that hinge out to there. And then she's got the same sort of style of joint as like the foot, basically. And I guess it's more like the, the wrists where you get the hinge and you get the swivel where it inserts. And she's got that same joint at the wrist where it swivels and then hinges. Now I was talking about this on Two-Face. I don't know why he didn't have the hinges because a character so small like Catwoman has them and he didn't. And then she's got... A little bit of ball joint movement on the head. It's more like just rotation and a little tiny bit of up and down. Uh, this design of the character is my favorite between New Batman Adventures and Batman the Animated Series. And you're going to hear a lot of that from me. Let's bring in Batman just so you can see what the scale is like between the two of them. That looks great together. This is what this line's all about. Is creating a look between all these characters if I can get Batman to stand without a stand. Do I have a stand? Ooh, I do have a stand. Let's put Batman on a stand. Uh, especially the Batman the Animated Series look for me, which is my preferred look for the characters. Get, oh, that was too far. I made him do the splits. Get on there, Batman. You got a little tiny... That's a white thingy on you there. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I dig that a lot. Look at the two of them together. The height differentials between the characters is well done, too. I can't think of a character where it was like, oh, this one's way too big or this one's way too small. I think they all look pretty darn good together. Catwoman is a winner. You have to get Catwoman if you're getting Batman the Animated Series. She's a must-have character. And her, link, her look is so distinct between the two series. And I prefer this one. Um, and you get Isis. I mean, you gotta have Isis. All right, that wraps up Wave 1. So now we move into wave two. Please stick with me. I'm going to get through all of them. I decided that I'm going to break up some, I think, of with the non-numbered stuff. So I'm going to do numbered, numbered, numbered. And then every once in a while I'll do something that was not numbered, like the Batmobile I don't believe was numbered. The Rogue's Gallery set was not numbered. So I'm going to break those up with those sets just so I can open them. Because I really want to open that Batmobile. All right. See you guys.